What's up guys, this is Blake, and today I'm going to show you how to make an actor website, uh, or really for anybody in the entertainment industry. Um, this is a really nice professional looking website using a theme called Versi. So you're taking a look at the site now, it's got a nice featured image slider up at the top. Uh, it's got an about section where you can list your stats, your bio, skills, that sort of thing. And what I really like about this theme is the portfolio section. Um, you can segment your images or videos into different categories and then people can click on those categories and see just that content and of course a contact page. So I'm going to show you how to build this exact website right now. Now to get started you want to set aside all of your web assets. This includes your logo, a favicon logo, and all of the images that you want to use on the site and then also it's nice to have your bio uh, in like a word document that you can copy and paste from. And once you have those things set aside, then you're ready to go ahead and get started building your site. So you're going to need some kind of hosting. Personally, I really like to use Bluehost because it's very affordable. In my experience, I've had good customer service, uh, and it's also really easy to install WordPress. You can use whatever you want for hosting. Um, this tutorial is going to show you Bluehost. If you want to sign up for Bluehost, you can do so below the video. When you sign up for Bluehost, you can indicate if you already own your domain or if you need to get a domain as well. Uh, in my case, I'm building this site for my actor friend Scott and I already own the domain, so I just enter it in and click next. On the next page, you'll be prompted to put in your name, address, and contact information for your new hosting. Now, down below on the drop down menu for the plans, you'll notice that the $4.95 price is actually only if you pay for 36 months in advance. So in my case, I'm actually going to be paying $6.95 per month. I'm going to pay for 12 months up front, so it comes to $83.40. And the last thing that you're going to do on this page is go ahead and put in your billing information and then hit next. Now the following page that you're going to land on is just a bunch of upsells in addition to hosting. So you can actually skip that entire page, scroll to the bottom, and click complete. Once you complete your order, you'll be prompted to create a password for your hosting account. So go ahead and create a password that you're going to remember. Um, and once you've created your password, then you'll be prompted to actually log in to Bluehost. And once you've logged in, this is your control panel. So the first thing that we want to do is install WordPress. So we're going to click on the hosting button at the top menu bar. And we're going to install WordPress, which is going to be the framework that your site's going to run on. So go ahead and click the WordPress icon, which should be about halfway down the page, right in the middle. Uh, as soon as you click WordPress, it's going to prompt you to click it one more time. Go ahead and do that. And then basically you're going to click start to start a new WordPress installation. Choose the website that you want to install it on. And uh, then you're going to go ahead and install it. So once WordPress is installed, go ahead and click the link and log in to your WordPress dashboard. So we'll be right back to this page, but quickly we need to get the WordPress theme uh, and actually install that first. So like I said at the beginning, this theme is actually called Versi and I found it on a website called Theme Forest, which is a great place to find themes for any kind of website. So you can click the link below the video to go straight to the Theme Forest theme that I chose. And once you're looking at Versi, when you click purchase, you'll be prompted to either sign into an existing account or set one up. Uh, it's really basic, it takes like two minutes. You can pay with PayPal if you want. Uh, or credit card. So in this case, this theme is $35, and once you have paid for it, then you can actually download the theme itself. So now we want to go back to our WordPress dashboard and install the theme that we just purchased. So back in WordPress, we're going to click Appearance from the menu on the left, and then we're going to choose Themes. Next, we're going to click Install Themes at the very top of the page, and then we're going to click Upload, and then we're going to go ahead and click Choose File and we're gonna select the zip file that we just downloaded from Theme Forest. And once the theme's installed, we're gonna click Activate. After the theme is activated, we'll still need to configure a few things just to make the website look the way that we want it to. Select Theme Options, and we'll be working on the General Settings tab first. We're gonna upload our favicon image, which is the small square image that displays in the URL bar, and we're also gonna upload our logo for the website. Now, in my case, I made the logo 300 pixels by 75 pixels, which seems to fit pretty well for this theme. Once you have your logo set, click Save All Changes. Next, let's take a look at the home settings. Select Slider from the drop-down menu at the top. 
You can also get rid of the callout text. Now let's take a look at the home slider options. Click slide 1, then click upload. You're going to want to click upload files and select whichever images you want to have in your slider. After you've uploaded the first one, you'll want to click add new slide and repeat that process until you have all the slides that you want. In my case, I chose to use four slides for the home page. The last thing that we're going to do on this page is change the home slider callout text. In this case, I want to highlight that my friend Scott is an actor, a comedian, and an overall class act. Once you've done that, you'll want to make sure and click Save All Changes. Next up is Menu Settings. In my case, I'm not going to make any changes to this section of the site. Let's jump ahead to the Contact Settings. Make sure and set an appropriate email address so that people can get in contact with you. Personally, I chose not to put a phone number on this website, and for address, I just put Los Angeles, California. For the Google Map settings, I took latitude and longitude positions that I pulled from Google for Los Angeles, California. You don't have to put a Google Map if you don't want to, but I thought it'd be a nice touch. As far as logo for the map, I just went ahead and removed the stock one that came with the theme, and then click Save All Changes. Next up is Footer Settings. Now we're not going to change much here, but I am going to get rid of the footer text that came with the theme when I installed it. Now the last thing I'm going to adjust is the social sharing. So after I click on that tab, I can see all the different social networks and I can put in whatever links I want to my social profiles. Next we're going to go ahead and add the pages for our website. So click pages from the menu on the left and you'll see that the theme comes with a sample page. You can actually click trash and just get rid of that page altogether. And then you're going to click add new at the very top. Now after you click add new, you're going to want to give the page a title. So let's go ahead and start with our home page. So we'll name it home. The next setting we're going to play with is the order over on the right. We're going to go ahead and put one. And then in the middle of the page where it says assign page as, from the drop down menu, you want to make sure and click home section. And the only other change that I'm going to make on this page, uh, which is completely optional, is the background color. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom, and under background color, I'm going to go ahead and use a color code that I had chosen beforehand, um, just because I liked that specific color. And once you're finished editing the page, you're going to go ahead and click publish at the top, and your page is good to go. So we'll click add new page again, and we're going to make the about section, which is going to hold your bio. So after naming the page about, for the order we're going to go ahead and put two, and from the drop down menu we're actually just going to leave it at the default. Now once again I'm going to go ahead and change the background color of this page. Uh, you totally do not have to do this, um, but I just decided that I wanted to do it to make my website or Scott's website look a little bit more custom. So since this is the about page, this is actually the one page that we need to put in some text um, in the big text field in the middle of the page uh, in your WordPress dashboard. So like I said at the beginning, it's great to have your bio and stats and any information ready ahead of time or you can just type it on the fly. So with the stats that Scott gave me, uh, his height, weight, eye color, hair color, I decided that I'd rather have that laid out horizontally across the page than stacked vertically like when I copy and pasted it. So I'm actually going to click the R icon at the top and use what's called a short code. So when I click that icon, then I'll click columns, and then I'll click five columns. So that's gonna give me a small piece of text where I can actually insert um, my stats in between these brackets, and that will align it so that it's actually laid out in five different columns across the page. So I'm gonna go ahead and put five columns for each of the stats, and then I will click save. The next page that we're going to add is our portfolio page. So go ahead and name one page portfolio. For order, we're going to put three. From the drop down menu to assign page as, we're going to want to make sure that that's uh, the portfolio section. And then below that, the drop down, I chose to use three columns just because I liked the look of that for the portfolio itself. And the final page that we're going to add is the contact page. So we're going to click add new page one more time. We'll name the page contact. For order, we're going to go ahead and put four. And then from the drop down menu to assign the page as, we're going to make sure that we choose contact section. So the final thing that we have to do for our website is add our portfolio items. 
So we're going to click Portfolio from the menu on the left, and then we're going to click Add New Item at the top of the page. Next click Set Featured Image on the right hand side of the page. Here, just like before, you're going to upload whatever file you want in your portfolio. Once you've selected an image to upload to your portfolio, you'll want to give it a name. You can give it a name based on the client that the photo shoot was for, or anything you want, really. The next thing that you want to do is add portfolio categories. On the right hand side, type in whatever category you think fits best. In this case, we're going to use photo shoots. Once you've published your portfolio item, you can go ahead and add more. You can add as many portfolio items as you want, and also as many categories as you want. Also remember that certain portfolio items can actually be in two different portfolio categories, or more. So in some cases, we might put one photo in photo shoots, but also in headshots. Once you've added your portfolio items, your website's complete. Go ahead and check it out, and take a look if you want to change anything. Now, there are plenty of things that you can change and adjust that I didn't cover today, but I think that what I did cover is enough to get you a professional looking website in just one afternoon. So hopefully you enjoyed this video today. If you have any specific questions, you can leave them in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer them in a timely manner. And you can also keep in touch with me on my website, which is blakejamison.com. Thanks.